Hi, it's Dr. Ogden. In this lecture, we're going to just do a real quick overview of some major th themes that are in biology. I um, really hope, though, that you look for some of the other good videos that are out there to further your knowledge of these subjects. So we'll be talking about metabolism um, and enzymes and reactions and a few, few related topics. Then we'll talk about photosynthesis and finally uh, cellular respiration. So um, one of the things that inside of our bodies is that reactions have to happen. We talked about this with chemistry and, and you have to take reactants and maybe break their bonds and make products or, or so forth. But you have to go through this react, a, a reaction. And in order for a reaction to take place, the reactants have to reach an activation energy. So there has, it's almost like you think of it, they have to go over this hurdle. Once they make it over the hurdle, then, they, then the reaction will take place and you can, um, the reactants will become the products. So a lot of times this is described as kind of like pushing a boulder up a hill and it takes a lot of energy to push this boulder up this really high hill. But once you do it, it'll roll down and it'll uh, settle down here in the position B. So in our bodies, this, this, in order to be more efficient, we use enzymes, which are special proteins that have the ability to lower the activation energy. And so the reactants can go from reactants to products without needing so much energy to perform that task. And so that's what enzymes do. And that's the major, um, one of the major uh, important roles of enzymes in our bodies. Now another thing that I want to talk about is membrane transport. In membrane transport, we have two main types of transport that happens. One is called passive transport, and this requires no energy. And the other is active transport, and this requires energy. Now, the, in passive transport, there are three types of, of um, transport that can happen. The first is called diffusion. And this is simply where you have molecules that move from higher concentrations to lower concentrations. And they freely move right across the membrane, no problem. The membrane does not, is not a barrier to these types of molecules. The second type of passive transport is facilitated diffusion. And this is where, again, molecules move from high concentrations to low concentrations, but they, they're they unable to do this freely across the membrane, and so the membrane has channels that help this. So it facilitates the diffusion through these channels. And this channel usually is like a membrane, or I'm sorry, a, a membrane protein. And the third type of passive transport is called osmosis. So this is, this is a type of diffusion, but we have a special term for it, osmosis, because it deals with water molecules. Now, water molecules will move across the membrane freely, but they move from an area of um, where there is a low solute concentration. So for example, if there's very little salt on this side of the membrane, and there's lots of salt on this side of the membrane, then the water molecules move from the low solute concentration to the high solute concentration. So you get higher water concentration would be over here, meaning you've got more water molecules per solute molecule than over here. So the water moves in this direction. And the last um, type is active transport, which requires energy. In this case, the, you're going to be moving molecules from a lower solute concentration to a higher solute concentration. This requires ATP and many times requires the help of a protein that, that this protein changes its shape and essentially moves molecules from this side of the membrane to this side of the membrane. Now we'll talk about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Notice how these two processes are linked. Light coming from the sun enters earth and <clears throat> plants convert that light energy into chemical energy. You, and typically we think about this in the form of glucose. Glucose and oxygen are the ingredients that you need for cellular respiration to occur. The byproducts are ATP, which are the en is the energy source of the cell, and you also get heat that is given off, and water and carbon dioxide. Well, it turns out that water and carbon dioxide also are the ingredients 
some of the ingredients for photosynthesis. So you, you get this cycle of both nutrients and energy. <clears throat> Cellular respiration can be easily described in this way then, that you have glucose, and it's one molecule of glucose plus six molecules of oxygen, go into the reactions, and you get out of that six carbon dioxide molecules, six water molecules, and some energy. If you take a more detailed look at this and put some names onto some of these processes, we take the glucose molecule and it becomes two pyruvic acid molecules. And the process that does this is called glycolysis. And glycolysis happens outside of the mitochondria and can happen in the absence of oxygen. Now, notice along the top here these NADHs. These are electron transport molecules. So the important thing here is that they have electrons. And th one, through this process of glycolysis, some electrons are gathered and they get funneled into the, the rest of the process that ultimately will be down here in the electron transport chain. So glycolysis results in only two ATP. Not a lot of ATP, but a little bit. Then these pyruvic acid molecules are funneled into the mitochondria and into the, they become um, two acetyl COA molecules and then this is put into the citric acid cycle where a lot of reactions take place. But notice that from this initial step we get two more NADHs and some carbon dioxide is given off. Then in the citric acid cycle we get six NADHs and two FADH2s and we make two ATPs and some more carbon dioxide is given off, four molecules. But, but we still, at this point, have only made four total ATPs. And the point of this whole process is to make ATP. And so what, what we've been doing is accumulating these electrons to be put in this electron transport chain. And now this all, this runs this turbine that makes 34 ATPs. So we uh, total we get 38 ATPs. Now it's only in this last part too do we ever use the oxygen. At this point the oxygen comes in and from that we're stripping these electrons and we're and we are now taking those hydrogens and combining them with the oxygens to make water and that's where you get the byproduct of water. <clears throat> Photosynthesis on the other hand has as its main ingredients six carbon dioxide molecules, six water molecules, the light energy provides this energy to drive the photosynthesis reactions, and you get as the, the products glucose, one glucose molecule, and six oxygen molecules. If we look at the details of photosynthesis, we can see the light coming in and the light reactions happening in this stack of thylakoids. The water is, in, is brought into these reactions, and then we also are using some NADPs and ADPs for, the, for this part of the reaction. The byproduct here is oxygen. So notice that photosynthesis, that the oxygen that is given off by plants is actually given off because of the water. Not, many people think that it's actually the CO2 being turned into O2, and it's not. It's actually the oxygen comes from the water. We also get ATPs that are made, not a lot, but some ATPs and some NADPHs. So these are electron transport carriers as well. And these go into the Calvin cycle. And in the Calvin cycle, which are sometimes called the dark reactions, but they can happen when it is light, in the Calvin cycle you get this, this, uh, this cycle that continues to happen where you bring in carbons and the carbons get built up and built up and built up into different ways until eventually all, after all of these reactions take place, you get sugar. And that's in a nutshell the reactions of both cellular respiration and photosynthesis.